I'm moving to, uh, to another project in which uh, we are included and I realized that I have minus two minutes to deliver this talk. So we'll um, uh, be as quick as possible. Uh, this is, a, a yet again, it's another project that is uh, res the, uh, the results of a uh, collaborative endeavor between uh, uh, European research uh, institutes, universities and companies. So uh, typically what we're trying to do in this session is show that uh, uh, by teaming up together under the authority of the European Commission, we can create new technologies and new, uh, and new services. So this one is called RISCOS, and I'm going to uh, d uh, explain where it comes from and what we're trying to achieve. It comes from the fact that the open source uh, world is an open territory that uh, people, uh, where people can dig and get some assets, but be because it is an open territory, it's also it becoming a field of studies. And we've had a whole uh, um, uh, uh, wave of uh, projects and services uh, aimed at explaining what is, uh, what is the open source world, how it works, uh, uh, who's there, and, uh, and give some, some measurements. So it's publicly accessible, but it is publicly, now we can study it. So there are uh, different uh, tools to do that, to explore and map the open source landscape. So I've just mentioned a, a few. One of the uh, origi original one was Fossology, that uh, was uh, uh, identifying all the licenses available on the uh, on open source uh, software av available. Then uh, we had Olo. Uh, of course, we had the OSS meter uh, project that was uh, uh, explained, uh, presented this afternoon. Uh, we also mentioned Marcos. There's Antipedia for the code interiority. And we, with, the, with uh, RISCOS, we are, uh, we are adding an another layer on top of those projects that aim at uh, delivering measurement. So with RISCOS, we're trying to approach something with a different, uh, with a different way. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll tell you why, um, but before, uh, um, I want to show you this slide, which is, uh, I found in China uh, last week, which was uh, at the China National Congress, um, China National Computer Congress. Uh, there was a big forum on uh, software crowdsourcing, and that's uh, what they want to call open source, because uh, it's a different approach. And uh, they were mapping this, the open source world like this, showing there the, the communities of development and communities of sharing, uh, sharing knowledge, and saying, OK, we need to map this. And they were uh, explaining and showing how they were analyzing how those communities were behaving, etc. So it's exactly the same thing. There is a whole world out there. And you, the user, you don't know where to find your components. So we're going to help you do that. And uh, uh, in fact, looking for components, um, we, we are different uh, criteria to find the components and there are different um, uh, issues by, uh, with finding components. One of the issues is about in terms of quality, in terms of whether it fits your requirements or not, but uh, the one that we are addressing with RISCOS is the issue of risks. The idea is that there is some risk associated with uh, uh, the act of selecting a component to integrate into an application in or into uh, or into solution. So this is um, what we what we try to do. The objective of the RISCOS project is uh, to add another layer and to develop risk management methodologies to facilitate the adoption of open source software and that's for mainstream product and services. So the idea is that you're a service provider addressing a, a huge mainstream market. You want to use a, an open source component into your service. We will help you select it and mitigate the risk and select it with a, a certain level of security. So that's the idea. So, so what uh, RISCOS needs to do is to analyze uh, 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 businesses and, and the technical ecosystems, identify the way to measure the communities, so uh, what sort of measurements, and to develop some techniques for the statistical assessment uh, of this. Uh, we, we've put together this project with uh, eight partners uh, from, uh, from Spain, uh, uh, Italy, uh, Israel, uh, France, uh, uh, and other places. And, uh, 
uh, in terms of, FP, it's an FP7 project, in terms of uh, project definition, and it's 36 months, and we are at month 24. So now we are ready, and we've sh that's what we're showing here. We're showing a demonstration, we're showing the, the, the platform. Now, to do this project, we started from a real-life uh, use case. We had one of the partners called uh, a subsidiary of Ericsson, who uh, uh, is in the process of moving towards implementing, uh, in integrating more and more open source uh, components into their product. We're talking about networked, uh, uh, network equipment. And they do regular, uh, regulation enforcement uh, equipment, so they really have to be very sure about what they, what they, are, they integrate and uh, whether it's sustainable. So uh, uh, they are a very strict process, and for each product they have two uh, releases uh, under maintenance mode and they're preparing a third release. So everything there is a big process and the code management uh, uh, um, system which is very very thorough and uh, very secure. More, moreover the system is also adapted to different customers so you have the core, the core uh, system plus the, the different uh, uh, options and in, in, the, in the version there are more and more open source components being integrated. And um, the business challenge for them is really how they can really implement a systematic approach to integrate those open source components into their, in their product, the, the product and the product line. That, that for the future, because they're all moving towards open source to, for uh, reduction of cost and being a, a technology uh, um, really up to date in terms of technology. So what they need to do is to understand and mitigate the risk of adoption uh, of open source, so they are, they, they think, think again, they come from the conventional world, the proprietary world, they're moving to open source, for them it, it uh, takes them outside of their comfort zone, so they really have to understand what are the risks and how they can mitigate those risks, but also understand what can be the impact in terms of business, because if they fail, if they make the wrong decision, at some point they may lose customers, they may lose in terms of uh, image, reputation, etc. So it's, it's a, the, what's at stake, it's, it's a big, and what they they want to do is not only understand the component from the technical standpoint but the component from in terms of its sustainability and uh, understand what the old the ecosystem uh, that is behind so the approach here is to link uh, to, to 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 cover in a comprehensive way issues that are both technical and 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 also that have consequences on the business so to do that we we i'll show you how we we proceed to do to doing this and uh, we also validate this with real-life uh, uh, use cases. Some use cases, of course, by this uh, Ericsson subsidiary. But in terms of enterprise, we also have XWiki and, and Moodbile, which is another a MOOC uh, type uh, uh, project. Uh, we have also the communities. We, we approach them in terms of the community with XWiki, Moodbile, or W2. And there's also a government agency uh, implementing this and testing it uh, because they also have to select and provide recommendations for government users. So all, we're all in the, same, in the same type of approach. For instance, XWiki, they want to understand what are the results from risk costs to make sure that they can use these results uh, in terms of commercial argument or to improve their own processes. Us at OW2, what we want to do, we want to uh, give the, uh, the, the possibility to anybody uh, out there who wants to download uh, code from the OW2 code base to be able to evaluate it and to uh, have the same kind of uh, security and certainty when they use it and download it that maybe an Ericsson can have by using it internally. So these are use cases with different ways of this deploying and using, the, and using the platform. So this platform, how does it work? We, we talk about risk. So this is a risk approach thing. We think insurance, think, think uh, this is a, a view of the world. We're not talking in terms of quality, but in terms of risk, associated with quality. So to, to understand the risks, what we do, first of all, we, we go from data sources. So we collect raw data. These raw data are turned into some uh, what we call risk indicators. I will explain a little bit later. And um, to, to take this uh, raw data uh, and turn them into risk indicators, we need to understand what is the meaning of the data and what are the risks that can be associated to the data. This is why we need to have the experts coming in and help us understand that. So for each data set, we uh, leverage the uh, uh, expert sayings and experts input. And this is fe fed into a, a risk model. So they have, they have this risk model 
um, uh, which is like a black box where they understand uh, um, what is the data, uh, what are the consequences, uh, possible consequences, and uh, depending on some thresholds, how these consequences can change. Then there is an association with the business goals, and then the, deci the decision maker can, uh, can make the decision. That's uh, uh, roughly, I mean, really the, the, the very high uh, view. Uh, now, step by step, we collect the data. We collect raw data from, from tools like uh, Phosology, like Sonar, etc. And in this step, this is where we, we can really collaborate with uh, a project like OSS Meter. Because OSS Meter, for our understanding, this is what, what they do well. So we, we, can, we can use their, their input and how they connect to uh, data sources. And these data sources can be mailing lists, what's the frequency of the, the, the emails. They can be tweets, they can be uh, uh, bugs, they can be uh, how long it takes between bugs, I mean, etc. And these data are, are all collected and we change, we turn this data into what we call, so we call the, the raw data risk drivers, because they, are, they, they drive the risks. But then we, change, we turn them into what we call risk indicators. So uh, a risk indicator could be, for instance, in terms of the community behavior, the timeliness. Is the, is the community agile enough and uh, react quickly? So to do that, we need to take the raw data in terms of how many bugs uh, or emails, etc and, uh, and um, turn that into statistical series that will show the, uh, some percentage or the, the mean time between uh, uh, bug, bug, uh, uh, bug report and bug, bug fixing, this sort of thing. So this is what, uh, what we do. And there are all the, the, uh, the frequency of the commits. So there are all sorts of data, that are, uh, raw data that are available out there. And we turn them into what we call risk indi indicator. So risk indicator can be the timeliness but it could be also the quality. We can say, okay, because of this, there is a quality uh, measurement that we can figure out. Um, we could also um, get some risk drivers or raw data from the licenses, and that can give us a risk indicator in terms of legal risk indicator, et cetera, et cetera. Or in terms of, of the community, we can see if the community growing, uh, uh, moving, or maybe even with semantic analysis in the web, is the community in good health or not? And we can have also into, uh, some risk indicator in terms of sustainability. So we, we turn this raw data into risk indicators. And then these risk indicators, like activeness here, uh, I'm show, uh, showing, for example, timeliness or the community timeliness or the activity of the community, these indicators, we link them with uh, risk, business risk, so operational risk, financial risk, um, whether it's going to be more complicated to manage, etc. And this is how we can go from the basic raw data from uh, running a project and developing a project to something that will be understandable by management, by executives, something that are not technical but that are able to make decisions. So the overview like, is like this, we have all the risk drivers, they are turned into risk indicators and then they are connected to re business risks and, uh, and goals. So this, this chain is the very methodological chain that has been uh, developed and this is where the academic partners uh, fit. But now we have the second part where we actually develop a platform. And this platform is a decision support platform. So we use this methodology to create, uh, oh no, I forgot about the methodology. The future extension of the methodology is to really then dig into the social networks. And I understand, so we already have some of the tools you can check out with Node Excel. Uh, we already some of that have the tools and we're trying to find out how we can actually uh, uh, dig all the data from the, the, the social networks in order to understand how the, the whole community is working or, or behaving. Uh, in order to, to, again, to apply the risk driver, risk indicator, business goals uh, sequence. Now the platform itself, it's become, as I said, it's a decision support platform, has a few functions. First of all, you can, uh, a modeling function where you can get the data and model your, 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 risk, uh, uh, your, your risk models. Uh, then how you get the, the input from the, uh, from the raw data. So how you have to, to get this. So there is a whole uh, set function here, which is the data collection th the thing. Then there is the processing, so the risk management uh, techniques that fit there. So we process 
uh, the, all this um, the data be depending on how the, the, the companies or use the user ask the questions there. And, and then we have uh, rendering, and the rendering is how we deliver these results, because results can be all the same, but depending on the priorities of the user and some of the options that the user can, uh, can push uh, or highlight, then the rendering or the strategies that have been, or the recommendations can, can be different. And of course, the whole platform can be, uh, can be totally customized, so it will be uh, made available as an open source um, software. And this open source software is in fact an application running on top of uh, uh, XWiki. So XWiki is an OW2 project and we've developed a specific application with all sorts of modules. So this uh, um, architecture diagram shows you for instance what you have outside of the, the, the platform there. For instance you have the people, the development tools, etc. We have here the data, the risk data collectors. So these are connectors that we, uh, we develop, a little bit like uh, what OSS Meter uh, has, been, uh, has been doing, so, so, so to pull out uh, uh, date, raw data, uh, this is where we meet. Then we, we collect all this in the uh, um, data collector manager, and, and then we have something we call here the domain manager, where we can actually, uh, in fact, customize or develop all the parameters for a specific query for a specific uh, project. So if we take, for instance, Moodby or, uh, um, or XWiki, this is where we would fit the risk analysis manager, the, 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 ex, the ex input from, uh, from the experts, uh, the specific risk models adapted to that project, because different projects may uh, require different type of risk models, different type of approach. And, and with this, we have, uh, we have a whole domain. So the demonstration you can see, you can see how you can create the risk domains, how you can create uh, some, some queries, and, um, and I ultimately how you can get some of the results. And the results uh, can look li like something like that. I mean, we're still working, it's not uh, completely, uh, it's not done yet exactly how we're going to render. We know how to, how to have the raw data. Now we need to uh, work on delivering, uh, rendering the, the data into a form that is uh, intuitive for uh, first of all, the technical people, but uh, uh, maybe essentially for the for the managers that uh, may have to dis to decide on selecting a, a project or uh, or another. And that's it. Uh, that's it for me. So for more information, you can contact uh, Xavier French, who's the project coordinator. Um, and I invite you to join us at the Riscos Convention, which is next Wednesday, uh, Wednesday the fifth of November in the afternoon. Uh, that's something that is organized in the framework of the OW2 conference. Uh, we have this risk of convention where we will have uh, most of them uh, with a little bit of workshop about how we um, um, develop the risk, the risk models and uh, uh, real in-depth demonstrations of, of the platform. Thank you very much. <laughs> Questions? No? Coffee? Thank you very much. Thank you for attending this session. Uh, please, oh wait, yes, we have all the, Olivier will collect all the, 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 the presentation. Thank you.